Hello and welcome to the episode 232 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, our main focus will be on a bomb scare, a Paul McCartney-centered session and the last time the Beatles were together in a studio. On the 20th of August 1960, the Beatles, with Pete Bess on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany. In 1961, the lads, still featuring Pete Bess on drums but with Paul McCartney on bass, performed for the eighth time at the Hambleton Hall in Liverpool for an evening put together by promoters Wally Hill and Vic Anton. In 1962, the Beatles returned at the Majestic Barroom in Crewe after a week, this time with their new drummer, Ringo Starr. 1963, the Fabs played the second of six consecutive engagements at the Gaumont Cinema in Bournemouth. On the 20th of August 1964, the Beatles arrived in Las Vegas, Nevada at 1 am having taken a plane from San Francisco, California, immediately after the end of their performance there. After a morning of rest, the lads performed the first of two shows at the convention center at 4 pm. Before the second show, at 9 pm, the management received news from the Los Angeles Police Department of an anonymous call announcing a bomb threat. After some consultations, it was decided that if the second show had been cancelled, there was going to be a concrete risk of violent disorders from fans. The Beatles had to go on with the show, fearing the worst. Luckily, nothing happened, and the band went back to their penthouse suite at the Sahara Hotel after playing to a combined audience of 16,000 people. They were advised to stay away from the casinos, because underage fans might be tempted to follow them there. 1965. The Beatles performed twice at 3 and at 8 pm at the White Sox Park in Chicago, Illinois, in front of a total of 62,000 people. Not a sold out, but the Beatles' share of the gate of this stop of their second North American tour was still $155,000, about $1,279,000 in 2020 money. In 1966, the third North American tour of the Beatles was supposed to stop in Cincinnati, Ohio, but the organizers failed to provide a cover for the open-air performance due at 3.30 pm at Crosley Field. A downpour minutes before the beginning of the concert meant certain electrocution to anyone foolish enough to try to play. In fact, the decision was taken when Roddy Mal Evans was thrown across the stage when trying to plug a wet amplifier in. The concert, with 35,000 people already inside the stadium, had to be rescheduled for lunchtime on the next day. Before switching to the studio sessions featured in this episode, let me stop for a second to thank you for your support. If you're listening to this podcast for the first time, you might not know that your help is crucial for the creation of further music-related material. Please visit www.simonmas.com support to see what you can do to make it happen. Of course, you can do nothing and simply enjoy the content, but even a simple share on your socials can enlarge our little community and make my work easier. Think about it, and thank you for being fab! 20th of August 1968, between 5 and 5.30 pm, John Lennon and Ringo Starr were in Studio 3 of the EMI Studios to complete the work on Year Blues by adding a countdown at the beginning of the existing mono mix of the song. Then, engineer Ken Scott completed a mono mix down of Revolution 9 from the existing stereo mix of the piece. After break, a second session started at 8 pm, with Paul McCartney helping completing Mother Nature's Son by overdubbing a second acoustic guitar and bass drum 
recorded in the corridor outside the studio to get a big natural echo effect. After that, two trumpet and two trombone players, whose names have been lost, rounded out the song performing an arrangement prepared by producer George Martin, again paid £25, about £440 in 2020 money, for his work. After the work for Mother Nature's Son was completed, Paul decided to record another two songs of his. One, called Etc., survives only in the name. The only existing tape was taken away by Paul McCartney and never returned. According to Beatlesbible.com, this was a version of Thingummy Bob. Check out episode 181 for more information on the piece, with lyrics and the word etc. coming up here and there. The second was Wild Honey Pie, a 53 second number featuring vocals, guitar, and bass drum, all performed by Paul. The song was completed and mixed in mono by the end of the session, at 4 pm. One year later, in 1969, between 2 and 6 pm, John Lennon's I Want You, She's So Heavy was completed with an editing gluing together the first 4 minutes 37 seconds of the 18th of April version, recorded at the EMI Studios, and 3 minutes and 7 seconds of the 22nd and 23rd of February version of the song, recorded at the Trident Studios, with an abrupt cut during the crescendo in the finale. Then, between 6 pm and 1.15 am, a tentative master tape for Abbey Road was compiled. The two sides were reversed, the album ended with I Want You, She's So Heavy, and Octopus's Garden and Oh Darling were switched to. Anyhow, today marked the last time that the four Beatles were together at the EMI Studios. The dream was over, even if nobody knew yet. It would take another month for John to communicate to the band that he wanted a divorce, and another eight months for the world to learn the news of the breakup from Paul McCartney. Check out episode 100 for that. This concludes today's episode. Tomorrow, among other things, we'll check on the continuation of the three North American tours. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.